All right, hello and good afternoon to our attendees from Boston, Massachusetts. It's wonderful to have so many of you joining us today for our webinar about Boston University's genealogy programs as you educate yourself about this growing field. My name is Sarah and I will be moderating and helping to facilitate today's session with our host and program director, Melindy lutz -Byrne, along with our enrollment manager, Carrie. We will be conducting a live Q&A session at the end of our presentation, so please use the questions box in your attendee control panel to submit questions throughout the duration of the webinar or during our Q&A session. We will try to address as many questions as time allows us today. Here you can see our agenda uh, for today's presentation. We will discuss the two courses offered here at BU, the Genealogical Principles course and the Genealogical Research Certificate program. We also will cover the curriculum in each course, course logistics, and then finally the registration process. I would now like to introduce the genealogy program director, Melindy. Melindy is well known in the genealogy community as an author, editor, speaker, anthropologist, and archivist, and former president of the American Society of Genealogists. Melindy specializes in, in forensic genealogy and has served as lead instructor for about 10 years, helping to design and staff this program. So thank you, Melindy, for joining us today, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Sarah, and welcome to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. I hate looking at my picture. <laughs> All right, here's a program overview. We have two courses. The first one, Genealogical Principles, is geared to people who are entering the field and uh, want to expand what they know and be up to date on the basics. And the certificate in genealogical research is geared more toward an experienced genealogist uh, maybe one of the things that you consider is if you have heard of and are familiar with the genealogical proof standard, you are likely to be a good candidate for our certificate course. But if you have not uh, heard of that, you might want to start with genealogical principles. Next slide, please. So let's talk about the principles course. It does provide a good bit of hands-on practice. So you do get to practice some genealogical research skills, and you might have quite a few, but you may also have some bad habits that we may be able to suggest other ways of going about certain solutions. We introduced the master, uh, the genealogical proof standard, and we cover public records, we talk about uh, basic concepts and terms. We also have a final module on DNA and ethnicity. And throughout the course, we introduce concepts uh, related to ethics and how one practices genealogy ethically. This is presented over seven weeks. Next slide, please. So, Laying the foundation is the first uh, set of modules. And as I said, we talk about the, the proof standard, standard and we talk about various tools, including databases. Um, we do some exploration of records. We do uh, give you access to Heritage Quest and to the library edition of Ancestry with this course. So we're able to demonstrate some of the capabilities of those databases. Next slide. The genealogical writing modules are very interesting uh, in that many of our students find that their writing skills are a little bit rusty. And we're able to uh, polish some of the things that you may have been doing or forgot you used to do uh, and 
because the GPS requires as its final element a coherent written conclusion, you get some practice doing that as well as being examples of where it's been done very well. Next slide, please. The two modules about the genealogical practice cover uh, a deep dive into some casework, show you things about uh, planning a report, uh, how you use transcriptions, timelines, abstracts, the difference between abstracts and transcriptions, um, and you get to see a good array of um, casework as well as talk about it in your discussion group. Next slide. The final module in genealogical principles addresses genetic genealogy. And uh, the things that are on the slide here are not necessarily in the order of importance. I would say that the most important thing there uh, is the ethical compass that you bring to dealing with living people. So. This module will tell you about the major testing companies and what kinds of problems you can solve with the various tests that are available. It will also uh, show you some basics about different kinds of genetic genealogy, mitochondrial Y-DNA, and a little bit about autosomal DNA. And once again, you'll have an opportunity to read about it uh, discuss it in class and answer questions in a uh, quiz atmosphere. Next slide. There are three textbooks for the genealogical principles course. They're here uh, Everything Guide to Online Genealogy, Genealo uh, Genealogy Standards, and Genetic Genealogy in Practice. You don't use the entire book for genetic genealogy in practice, but it's a great text to have on hand if you plan to do further work in that area. Next slide. So the Genealogical Research Certificate Program is a step above the principles program. It's taught by nationally recognized experts. It uh, revolves around the genealogical proof standard. It's tailored to meet the requirements for a successful portfolio filed for consideration with the judges from the board for certification of genealogists. You don't actually do work that you would then submit, but you do have experience, hands-on experience in each of the elements that are required for a successful portfolio. These are presented in four graded modules, and the entire course is 15 consecutive weeks. So let's talk about the four modules. Next slide, please. Yep, we'll do that in a minute. Uh, just to let you know that your classmates um, come from all walks of life, which really enriches the discussion and the learning that goes on in your group. Um, so many of our students come from different fields. Uh, some have terminal degrees in these different fields. We see quite a number of librarians, teachers, people who do historical research, and archivists in our classes. But um, individuals who are writers, um, biologists, doctors. Uh, one of the things that's not here, we, we have a fair number of current or ex-military folks who take the class. Um, there are people who are in development who take the class. A very broad range of perspectives. Next slide. Uh, 
there are prerequisites for this course. It is a demanding and rigorous course. So uh, the first three are very, very important. You will want to have completed genealogical principles or have the equivalent experience before you start this. You really need to know things about the genealogical proof standard and you should also have a good command of how to use Word and basic use of your computer. Um, you also want high-speed internet access. And while we've had quite a number of students who do not have English as a second language, uh, sorry, who are English speaking, but it's their second language is what I mean. Um, a lot of people who are native speakers of English don't write it very often. You will be asked to write quite a bit in this course, and this is an important skill to have. We'd like you to have experience with records. It's not as vital as some of these other things. Uh, we would like you to have at least opened a few of the genealogical journals that are out there. Um, and read articles. If you've done the principles course, you will have been exposed to some of the best articles that are out there. You can also visit the Board for Certification of Genealogists website and read some such articles for free. And I recommend you do that before you start the research certificate program. The other uh, experience you can gain and, and work on afterwards, but it's nice to have up front as well. And use of outside databases, uh, you'll want to have that experience when you go into the discussion groups. So it doesn't hurt to go and look around a little bit before you start the class. Next slide. So the first module, Genealogical Methods, will put you through logical and critical thinking skills, help you plan out uh, the analysis and the solving of complex problems. Um, there's a, a research cycle that we recommend and help many people when they really don't know where to start or they get to a certain point and there's a fork in the road, you're going to decide what to do next. Uh, we also include in this first module some information about genetic tests and their uses, and it specifically about mitochondrial DNA and why DNA, autosomal DNA, is later. And you engage with your instructor facilitators and graders in multiple ways. It's a very interactive process if you want it to be. And it's important to check in daily to see what people are saying and respond to them. Next slide. Evidence evaluation and documentation is the second module. And this is the meat of the course, these are the things you must know to be a skilled genealogist. Um, you are examining evidence in documents, in testimony, in all the different sources that we use. You learn to question everything, trust but verify. Um, you look at the origin of the evidence is it hearsay? How do you evaluate this evidence? Um, and there are techniques of proof that they're covered, plus uh, an introduction to some good analytic skills. I particularly like syllogistic logic. This is the kind of approach where if Joe and John are full brothers, and John is the son of George. 
uh, then the condition is Joe is the son of George. So that sort of algebra problem is a technique we use very frequently when the records fail to tell us that directly and you, you have to go through an indirect proof. Next slide, please. Module three is forensic genealogy. Uh, forensic genealogy is the study of identity and kinship as it pertains to the law. And when you are dealing with living people, uh, the law is almost always involved. So we talk a lot about your interaction with living people, not something you often consider when your practice may have all been in past generations where there's nobody to ask these questions. Um, we do deal with the living quite a lot in this module. Uh, we talk about what's ethical. We, talk, we don't tell you what's ethical, but we ask you to get in touch with what you think is ethical. And sometimes we tell you what the law is and you decide whether that's an ethical law or not. Uh, we cover things like missing heirs. We do a photo identification unit. Um, and the last two weeks are a unit on autosomal DNA and its use, which is uh, challenging for some. We recommend that you start reading at the beginning of the module the assignment that uh, you'll be using at the end in genetic genealogy and practice. So that for people who have no experience with autosomal DNA testing, um, you start at a at a fairly high level rather than um, have to catch up in those last two weeks. Next module. Or sorry, next slide. Here's an example of one of the tools we use in genetic genealogy. This is DNA Painter. We paint segments of shared matches onto a chromosome template. And by doing that, we can see where the matches overlap. People who overlap on the paternal or maternal side and match, this indicates that they have shared ancestry. It's one of the easy visu visualizations we have as a tool to try to prove who someone is. And where the and to push back ancestry. Next slide. The last module, module four, is genealogy as a profession. In this module, you will be handing in a report at the beginning, which was assigned in the first module. So you've had about 13 weeks to work on it. This is a assigned. Uh, task to go to a local repository near you, like an archive or a library that has archives, and find a unpublished, not online document and write a report with specific elements in it that are given to you at the beginning uh, about that document. It is one of the most interesting things to see what your classmates come up with if they sh choose to share with you in this final module. Um, so this addresses particularly the use of genealogy as a profession. So client relations, contracts, um, where you can get further education and uh, focus on becoming certified through BCG is part of the curriculum. Next slide, please. There are four texts for this class. Um, genealogy standards, mastering genealogical documentation, professional genealogy, and genetic genealogy in practice. If you are a returning student after principles, you already have genealogy standards and genetic genealogy and practice from that class. So there's just two additional books. All right, next slide. So we have some 
fairly highly recognizable alumni in our program. Here's Mary Tedesco, who was in one of our on-site classes, who after she graduated, went on to become one of the co-hosts at the popular PBS TV series, Genealogy Roadshow. She's an Italian specialist, and she said some nice things about our program and how it helped her gain the confidence and skill to go out and do these good things. Next slide, please. And so also Michael, who took the class online in 2016, and this was the year that we first began including um, genetic genealogy in a big way instead of just mentioning what could be done with mitochondrial and Y-DNA. So Michael enjoyed his experience as well, and it really launched him into his own private practice as a genealogist. He also gave back by going to local groups and volunteering and becoming elected an officer, and he is currently the treasurer of the Massachusetts Society of Genealogists, which is a very active group in Massachusetts. Next slide. There are things in this course that you can't get anywhere else, and this one is one of them. This is uh, a picture that you will use in the class. Uh, it presented in forensic genealogy. And what you are told about this picture is only where it was taken. And by the end of the five steps that you're taught, you can name nine out of the 10 people in this picture from a standing start. The only thing you know is that this picture was taken in Lawrence, Massachusetts. And um, when this was done on the on-site version of the class, I would pose this question. I would hold the picture up and I would say, do you believe that at the end of this hour, you will be able to name all these people and the only thing I'm going to tell you is where it was taken. And people usually thought it was a trick question. But you'll see that this process works, and it works for people, uh, for pictures where there are three or more people, and where there is a historical society or other archive that has a collection of photographs for the area. Next slide, please. Both our programs are taught by extraordinarily experienced people. And the number of years represented by this slide that names all the instructors who you will have uh, is a staggering, staggeringly large number. Uh, three of your instructors are board certified genealogists. Six of them are on the clock. Uh, what that means is they're given a year to submit their portfolio, and some of them are in that process right now. Uh, each of them has their own specialties, and say you're interested in Russian genealogy, well, you're, you're going to want to talk to Alison Rana, who is quite the expert. Uh, some have eras that they're very good at. Some have ethnicities that they're very good at. Corey Oyerson was one of the students in our very first online offering, and she identified a Jane Doe uh, right off the bat. Very, very uh, interesting backgrounds on all of these folks. So you are in very good hands. The facilitators who assist each of these instructors are equally illustrious, very interesting people in their own right with their own specialties. So when you start the class, you'll see introductions at each module. And pay attention to what these folks are really, really specializing in. And 
take advantage of the opportunity to inquire uh, in the internal messaging system inside the class while you have their attention and see whether you can learn something special from them about the particular interest you have. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carrie, who will tell you more about uh, signing up for the classes. Thank you. Both online genealogy courses are instructor-led courses. The programs are asynchronous, so there is no set time of day or day of week in which we require students to log on to do the work. However, the instructors will give out weekly assignments, so you will know what you need to do each week. It's a very good idea to do daily check-ins to make sure that you're on time and that you're looking at the announcement and messages that the faculty may provide. The time commitment for the weekly time commitment for the genealogy principles course is approximately seven to ten hours per week and the weekly time commitment for the certificate course is approximately 15 to 30 hours per week. If you have any questions during the program, uh, there is a way that you can message the faculty right within the program and they will respond back via email. The platform that we use for the program is Blackboard. Um, some of you may be familiar with this platform with other online courses that you have taken. And we do suggest um, that for an internet browser that you use Firefox or group, excuse me, Google Chrome. Next slide. We offer both genealogy courses three times a year. We offer them every January, every May, and every September. The next session is right around the corner. It starts on May the 14th, and the enrollment deadline is quickly approaching. It is April the 19th. The tuition for the Genealogy Principles course is $995, and the tuition for the certificate program is $2,695. If the May session does not work for you, I would suggest the fall session, which starts on September the 3rd, with an enrollment deadline towards the end of summer, August the 9th. Both of the May session and September session dates and tuition information can be found on our website. We do offer uh, payment plans to students. Um, so if you are interested in our upcoming May session and you enroll this month in March, uh, there will be a two-month payment plan available where you can pay half the tuition in March and the remaining portion in April. You can also wait till April to enroll, but please know that that would require a payment in full. If you're looking for a longer payment plan, I would suggest the fall session to you. And then I would also suggest to either call or email and I could explain the details further about the longer payment plans available for the fall session. Oftentimes we have um, employers or spouses or family members gift the course to the student. Um, that's absolutely okay. You can do that right on the website. There is information available in the shopping cart for both the student as well as the payer being two different people. Both courses are eligible for a Sally Mae Smart Loan. Um, we do have information on our website, but this is um, a government-based loan. You would follow the instructions on the website for applying for this loan. Um, Sally Mae would approve you and let you know the terms and conditions of your loan. If you are going to enroll with Sally Mae, we kindly ask you to contact us 
to complete the enrollment process. Do not enroll on the website if you're using Sally Mae, as the website will charge your credit card. Um, last but certainly not least, um, the courses are eligible uh, for both VA and my CAA tuition funding. Any questions regarding military enrollments, please call or email us and we will get you to uh, the correct person to assist you with your enrollment request. We do have discounts available if you are a member of any of the below genealogy groups. Uh, the first one is American Ancestors, uh, commonly referred to as New England Historical Genealogical Society. There's also NGS, the National Genealogical Society. APG, which is the Association of Professional Genealogists. And SCGS, which is the Southern California Genealogical Society. If you are a member of any of these groups, there is a 10% tuition reduction uh, for either the principal's course or for the certificate course. There will be um, a code right in the shopping cart that you need to use to get your discount. Um, and I will let people know it's one discount per student. If you are a member um, of all four groups, um, unfortunately the 10% does not add up. If you have any questions um, regarding the course or tuition or enrollment or books, uh, we have a whole enrollment team available to answer any questions. You can contact us via email at bostonuniversity at mymax.net. You can contact us via phone at the phone number listed here, 617 502-8822, or you can visit us on the website at genealogyonline.bu.edu. We keep all the most up-to-date information on the website, and we do also have live chat available uh, for asking questions. All right, thank you so much, Carrie, and thank you, Melindy, for your valuable information about our genealogy programs. Um, at this time, we will now begin our live questions and answer session. So just as a reminder, please use your questions box on the right-hand side of your screen um, to ask any questions, and we will help facilitate that for you. Um, it looks like we have a couple of questions uh, that Carrie has been answering throughout the webinar, but we have quite a few more that have come in, so we will dive right in here. Let's see. To address um, the question here, uh, we have, let's see. Okay, so this person says, uh, Melindy, I am probably lacking some basic genealogical research principles. I have had seven DNA tests and use Ancestry.com often. Should I still take the first course to cover any gaps? Uh, I think Without knowing a little bit more, um, I'm just going to say probably you should start with principles simply because it's not just um, the DNA that can stand alone. It's all the techniques that you learn with other kinds of documentation that makes it a genealogical enterprise. So I think... Uh, if you are not familiar with the genealogical proof standard, that principles is a really good place to start. Um, regardless of how long you've been doing research or uh, what your specialty is, the, the GPS is really key to being uh, moving to the next level, in my opinion. All right, great. Thank you so much. Um, as a follow-up question to that, um, this person asks, what if I have many of the skills required for the first course, but not all? I am still not sure which course to take. Again, if, if you have 
a full understanding of how the GPS works. Uh, if you have a copy of the genealogy standards book and you've studied it and understand what each of the, I don't know, it's over 82 standards, not all of them necessarily for straight up genealogical practice. Some pertain to writing or to lecturing, but uh, there's, there's 80 plus standards that you should be familiar with to be comfortable as you go into the certificate program. Great, thank you, Melindy. Um, and this person, should I read the textbooks in advance and take the second course? You can certainly try, I'm sorry, is that to me? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can certainly try to do that, and perhaps uh, you would get quite a lot if you paired that with some involvement with uh, local society uh, and reading of at least one of the journals for uh, several issues of the journals. These journals include the New England Historic, it's called the New England Historical and Genealogical Register, uh, the NGS Quarterly, the American Genealogist, um, and the New York Genealogical and Biographical Record. These journals have uh, quality articles that conform to the GPS, and so you, you would get it experienced uh, by looking rather than doing. Uh, so yes, I suppose it's possible to do it that way, and uh, certainly we have students who've done that in the past, um, and so if you are likely to learn well from reading, uh, I would try it. All right, great, thank you. And Carrie, this question is for you. Do you think the courses are able to be completed by someone who works full time? Thank you. So I'm going to reiterate the time commitments for both courses. The genealogy principles course is approximately seven to 10 hours per week. I definitely think it's doable to do the genealogy principles course with a full-time job. The time commitment for the certificate program is between 15 to 30 hours per week. Um, so that one is going to be more challenging, however doable. Um, I suggest with the certificate program that during the 15 week period of the course, you make sure that you have the time to dedicate to the course and that if you are planning on going on any sort of vacations or work trips, that you either postpone those till after the course is over or you wait to take it during a future session where you will be able to dedicate the time. Um, I do like to quote a past student in saying that the certificate course, she was a, a 20 plus year career military woman, and she said that the certificate course was harder than boot camp, but she loved it. So it is a rigorous course, but you are going to take a lot away from it. Great, thank you, Carrie. Um, and Melindy, for you, um, this person has actually previously completed the BU Genealogy Essentials course. It is now asking if they would have to take the principles course um, as well. There are a few elements that are addressed in principles that were present in essentials, but as you probably noticed as you were listening, that uh, the Genetic genealogy component is new, and some of the writing skills are new, and certainly the depth of the examples and 
the learning is considerably more than what you learned in essentials. Uh, if you were a good student in essentials and if you have a copy of the genealogy standards, uh, why don't you uh, peruse those and consider whether you feel comfortable with the standards. Uh, maybe take a look at the genetic genealogy in practice if you feel comfortable with the first couple of chapters in that book and can do the exercises in the back, I would say uh, don't repeat the small amount of repetition in principles. You've probably got a good grounding there. It's the experience you, the depth of experience that you missed. If you can master the GPS and the uh, genetic introductory material. All right, thank you, Melindy. Um, and for you as well, this person is working towards a degree in public history, um, but has since dropped the program. So do you feel a degree would be worthwhile versus taking um, the course? I might not understand the question, a degree in genealogy or? Uh, it looks like a degree in public history, but they're trying to decide between um, taking the, um, going on to get a degree or, or therefore um, taking one of the genealogy courses, I think, to probably round out their, their studies. Well, I'm biased, of course, but I do think that the skills that a genealogist brings to problem solving can cross all kinds of boundaries. You, it doesn't just have to be history. It could also be many, many other things. And if you're asking the question in the terms of, is this a uh, career building course? The answer is yes. There are many places and institutions and companies that are hiring people who are genealogists and people who have training are in high demand. Uh, you do have to demonstrate some skill, but you also have the skill set to do that if you've taken this course. Uh, public historians have many opportunities as well. I think it's a personal decision on your part, but don't think that it's only genealogy that you can do with this. Uh, many of our librarians have gone on to specialized jobs uh, that required this kind of interaction with the public. And we also hire people from the class to be facilitators in some instances. So there are potential for not just learning, but also income at the other end. Great, thank you so much. Um, and again, for you, Melindy, uh, this person is wondering if they take the first course, the principles course, and they complete that successfully, can they then immediately move on to take the certificate program, um, or do you recommend there being a gap in between? I don't think I don't it's think necessary. I don't think it's necessary to uh, wait after taking principles. It might even be uh, an advantage to go straight to the certificate program. Depending on uh, your level as you enter principles, you may have had quite a lot of records, research, um, and maybe I could call it unstructured research prior to taking principles, and that will be good experience to bring directly into the certificate program. On the other hand, if you haven't really worked with records much and you found principles challenging, you might want to stop and do a little research on your own, 
you know, pose yourself some problems, see if you're successful, see if the specialty area that you uh, were interested in to begin with is still interesting and are you doing well with that when you try to solve a problem in that area? Um, if the answer is yes, then go ahead and try um, the certificate program. All right, thank you, Melindy. And Carrie, the next question um, is for you. And we have um, our books included in the tuition cost. Thank you, Sarah. The books are not included in the cost of tuition. Students are responsible for purchasing the books. The approximate cost of the books for the principal's course is, a bit, I believe, about $75, and the approximate cost for the books for the certificate course are $100. As Melindy mentioned, two of the books in the principal's course are also used for the certificate course, so if you do take principal's and then certificate, that will reduce your book cost. All right, thank you, Carrie. Um, and this question for you, Melindy. So this person is an aspiring professional genealogist. And as a first um, step, is it better to take BU or ProGen? We've had students who've done both. And they really complement each other very well. I would say the... Uh, order probably doesn't matter. Uh, and as the author of two of the chapters in ProGen, uh, I think that the process in both is similar. The standards underneath both are identical. And the discipline that you gain by doing either one of those uh, in whatever order is something that you can carry with you forever and it will serve you well in the next. So I know that there's often a waiting list for the ProGen course and in part it depends on who is in your group. Uh, I think the groups are 20 to 30 people at the beginning and sometimes you lose a few. Uh, so, depending on who's in that group and the one person who is the uh, overseer of the group, the leader, uh, that controls what kind of perspectives you see. In the, these BU courses, the groups are larger and uh, the instructors are more numerous and, and thus they bring different perspectives. Uh, so I, I couldn't tell you which is the better to do if you have the length of time necessary to do the uh, progen, which I think they recently reduced from the 18 months it was originally, uh, or the time necessary to do BU really up to you. Great. Thank you, Melindy. And Carrie, the next uh, question is for you. Can courses be taken at the same time or will it be too overwhelming for the student? We do not recommend um, students taking the principal's course at the same time as the certificate program. Uh, by taking the principal's program first, you will build um, a very solid foundation on which to then pursue the certificate program in a future session. All right, thank you. Um, and Melindy, this question is for you. Um, it says, what if our family history is not in English, but in Romanian? Um, brick walls can be had when family data is not in English. How would this course help break down those walls? It's a very good question, and uh, many, many of our students have 
problems that are not in English speaking countries or the records are in very old script or all those kinds of challenges. Uh, fortunately, in the certificate program, we have such a variety of people that you may find that the specialty uh, geographic area and the language uh, is something that one of the facilitators or the instructors is quite familiar with. Most of us have non uh, US, non English based research that we do. And uh, while we're a little light on Africa and most of Asia, we do have people that we can call on to uh, assist if you want to special training in those. Um, areas, I, I would say that you would probably best find lectures at conferences or online programs like the Virtual Institute that address those specifically. But what the certificate program and principles would give you is the solid grounding to do research in any language or in any time period. The same principles apply and uh, we may be able to help with something that's not in English too depending on what it is. Offhand I'm not sure anyone currently on the staff uh, could handle Romanian. Uh, we do have some Polish speakers and some Russian speakers and some Slavic speakers speakers. So we would look and find somebody if that was uh, a goal of yours and you shared it with an instructor who would probably kick it up to me and I would look for someone. Great, thank you very much. Um, and our next question for you, Melindy, um, this person is just a bit confused on the weekly process for the principal's course and is asking, what day of the week is there a lecture by the professor? And is it Monday and then anyone can catch up during the week? These uh, modules in both programs, both courses, are not taught in the uh, sit down and watch a lecture mode. While there are occasional uh, live classrooms where you will have the instructor at one end and you can listen at the other end and watch on the computer, uh, this is not taught by listening to someone lecture. Uh, the material is interactive in that you respond in discussion areas, you take exams, in the case of principals, they are quizzes, and you may have an opportunity, especially in the uh, final module, to listen to multiple live classrooms with that particular instructor. But none of the lectures are spoken. They're all written. So you will be reading course material. You will be interacting with classmates in the discussions. Instructors will show up there. You will be reading specialized uh, announcements that happen daily. You'll be able to ask the instructor in a public forum and the instructor will reply, uh, but it would not be verbally, it would be in writing where you can read it at any time. So there's no time restriction. And any of the live classrooms will be recorded and put in a form that it, they can be recalled and watched while you are enrolled in the course. 
Thank you very much. Um, and this person says, is it possible to draw from my ancestry and wiki trees to do assignments? They find it more intriguing if they can do work on difficult to find information for their family. And Melindy, I'll pass that to you, please. Not in all circumstances. There may be several opportunities for you to do that. Uh, we appreciate how uh, intensely personal a lot of this material is. We have found that although earlier versions of this course did encourage people to use their own experience and own problems, that uh, privacy restraints and a number of other things would cause people to either change the names or, or do things that basically invalidated the uh, coursework. It couldn't be checked and couldn't be graded. So uh, perhaps in the module two, evidence evaluation and documentation, in the certificate program, there is an opportunity for that. And certainly if you pull an unpublished document from an archive that pertains to your family, you could do that for the repository visit assignment that I mentioned in the certificate course where you get the assignment in the first module and you turn it in in the last module. But uh, if you wanted to mirror one of the assignments and you sent it to the instructor. So in other words, do both assignments, uh, both the assignment and the assignment with your family plugged into it, you could certainly do that. Uh, I don't think you would get it graded, but you would need to do the, the one that's assigned to get a grade. Great, thank you very much. And I know we have just a couple of minutes here and there's lots of wonderful questions that have um, come in throughout the duration of the webinar. Um, so we'll probably continue for a couple minutes past the, the top of the hour, um, if we can. Um, but our next question here, are your students all over the country? And I'm assuming the, la the time zone isn't an issue. And Carrie, I'll pass that to you, please. You are correct. We do have students across the U.S. and we do usually have a few international students each session. So time zone um, is not an issue. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and Melindy, this person says, um, do you cover what to do when there are adoptees in family trees or searching? Yes, that is an integral part of the certificate course is module three, forensic genealogy. And uh, it's not just adoptees, it's also orphans, also people with not expected parentage. Um, and this is uh, presented with a heavy dose of ethics as well because uh, there are red flags that you need to recognize and pay attention to when some of these situations arise. I think um, many people think that just because they can, they should. This isn't necessarily true. And uh, one of the things that we demonstrate in the genetic genealogy section of forensic genealogy is the principle of look but don't touch. And this is where you learn how to identify people without letting them know that you are looking at their records. They put their records up in a public place with the understanding that you can look at them. We don't recommend that you do anything nefarious to to see stuff you shouldn't uh, or that they haven't consented to. But what we do is demonstrate uh, how you can understand who it is that's being tested. For instance, I, I've got a case right now where I'm looking at the GEDmatch uh, 
autosomal DNA kit on a family member and this person has given for the name I am Ducky and I don't know whether they're referring to the fact that their last name is Ducksworth which it is or whether they're uh, referring to NCIS and they want to be David McCollum I don't know but the uh, way people will identify themselves in these public databases can sometimes be challenging for you to understand who they are, even though you can see their matches and you know where they might need to fit. Uh, depending on how much you know to begin with, it may not be obvious. And so we do deal with how you go about solving who this person is and other real basic things. So yes, we do deal with what to do. Great, thank you so much, Melindy. And does this course cover Native American roles, Melindy? You're referring to the, the roles that were done for tribes that were on reservations, I think. And uh, while there may be passing mention of Native American ancestry, we are not a record-based set of courses. These are uh, methodological courses, and so what you learn is about how to deal with records, period, and it shouldn't matter what the record is and what language it's in. These are uh, standards that apply to everything. Wonderful, thank you. And can you also please answer, how does the BU program compare to other genealogy programs? I'm not familiar with many college level uh, equivalent court courses. Uh, Brigham Young University in the US and Utah has a family history uh, sub I'm not sure what they call it, but it's part of a, a regular history bachelor's degree. And they cover uh, many things we don't that pertain to uh, LDS things, but they also uh, cover some things that we do. I, I'm not familiar with their full curriculum. Um, some library schools have a irregular uh, one semester course, usually for uh, patron services, uh, reference services, librarians as opposed to other special specialties in library librarianship. And uh, some of those are, are pretty good. Um, you do need to be a matriculated student in their library program to take those. Um, there may be some community college courses. I don't know of anything that uh, is at the rigorous level that either of these two programs are uh, currently in the US. There are degree programs at Strathclyde in Scotland and some of our students have gone on to take a master's degree or a doctorate um, in genealogy there. Uh, I, in the English speaking world, there are not many courses like that. A lot of people go to one week or two week institutes like SLIG, the Salt Lake, uh, Institute on Genealogy, which is in, I think, January or February every year. Um, there's uh, Gen Fed, which is put on by the National Archives once a year. Uh, there's probably four um, GRIP, the Genealogical Research Institute of Pittsburgh, that runs several summer weeks and has specialized classes, but these are 
just pieces of what you get in the 15-week certificate program. So there's a variety of things you can do piecemeal, but uh, nothing that I know of just yet, um, although I'm sure there's interest. We've, we've got over 4,000 graduates from the certificate program, so um, the word has spread that this is a useful kind of course to have, and there is interest out there, but I haven't heard of any operating courses. Great. Thank you for your answer, Melindy. Are there any explicit rubrics or guidelines for the grading process in the certificate program? Yes, most of, yes, most of the, uh, they're called assessments or assignments. The assessments uh, usually do not have rubrics. Um, the assignments usually do have rubrics, so you know exactly what it is that is expected and what you get points and don't get points for. Um, that is less important than understanding what the rubrics are telling you, which is what you should be paying attention to as you read the material before you do the assignment. Uh, if you mean, are there rubrics for overall grades, yes, in the syllabus you will see uh, what level of points are what grade equivalent. Okay, thank you so much, Melindy. Um, just a few more minutes here for questions, um, but I will continue on until we hit um, 10 past the hour. Um, so, Melindy, this person is asking, would I be able to receive feed feedback on anything I plan to submit in the course? If you are submitting uh, assignments, absolutely. Each, each assignment is graded and returned, and there is feedback about things you did well, things you did poorly. And if you have questions, you can always ask the grader. If you're not satisfied with the answers for some reason, you can ask the instructor. Um, if the instructor is not helpful for whatever reason, you can always ask me. Thank you. And does this course include videos as well? There are some videos uh, embedded in the course. Uh, there are welcoming videos, there are short explanation videos in some of the uh, in some of the modules, not all of them in the certificate course. I don't believe there are any short explanation ones embedded in principles. Um, so Yes, for certificate, probably not for principles. It, it depends on who's teaching it, whether it's embedded or not. And uh, the current staff, I believe, except perhaps uh, Allison Ryle teaching the genealogy module at the end of principles, she may have embedded videos. Great, thank you. And are types of certifications and certification portfolios discussed? We do not uh, show examples of portfolios in the class. You can see portfolios at the BCG website. Last I knew, they, they've recently revised that, um, and I believe it was their intention to share some. Uh, if you have a particular interest in that and you're enrolled in the certificate course, uh, you can use the internal messages to ask me, and I will share one of mine. Uh, but as I said, we are 
geared to teach the skill set necessary for a successful portfolio. And without showing you a portfolio, um, we are teaching you those elements that will help you do a good one. All right, wonderful answer, Melindy. Thank you. And with that, we will have to conclude our questions and answers session today. I'd just like to thank you all for your very insightful questions asked. And thank you, Melindy, for your um, wonderful answers provided to these questions. Um, and if anyone joined late, um, I will just mention again that we will be sending a recording to today's session um, in an email follow up. So please just be sure to check your inbox for that within the next day or two. Um, thank you all again for joining us today, and we hope the information presented will just help you guide you in your genealogical journey. And with that, I hope everyone has a pleasant afternoon.